All right, um, one of the things I want to say is when you get a fairly good day of visibility, and uh, this isn't really even a, a really, really good day of visibility, there is a little bit of haze out in the distance, but one of the things that you'll notice is there's no mirroring. Um, it's quite overcast. Um, the, there was a little break uh, to the east of me in the sky where a little bit of sunlight was coming through but I mean it wasn't even really light rays because it was still kind of uh, you know cloudy but the thin lower clouds were kind of dissipating off in the distance but it really wasn't throwing any direct sunlight on the water also uh, too, look at uh, I'm at a low perspective and I go even lower than this um, two separate times toward the end of the video um, but you know, what I want to say is when there is miraging and mirroring going on, what it does, um, and, and I read an article about this, is the, the mirroring causes a ramp up effect um, that will actually um, cause things to get blocked out. Now, the, these islands right here are approximately six miles away, five and a half, six miles away. And I'm always trying to get to this one little spot right here, right there where you can see the land um, between the two islands, or actually it's one island, but you can see the land right there in that little area, um, which I've actually caught guys in some of my previous videos getting out of their boat and walking up to this land, but if it was mirroring out, any boat that would be sitting there would be cut off, and you would see just open space in that little gap there instead of seeing that little bit of sliver of a land um, that's, that's right there that you can actually see. Um, you know, people always say that it's refraction pulling it up. Well, I'll tell you, this is the way I think. Um, light, if there was a light out there, light does refract up, reflect up, and that's what occurs when there's a lot of light out is you get that light reflecting off of the tops of all of these uh, little waves, little swells, and the lower I get to the water, those accumulate and start causing a, um, a mirroring effect, and that mirroring effect is a ramp. It literally ramps up and cuts off the bottoms of things. Um, also, I think it's a combination to because when there's a lot of humidity in the air, you get a magnification, which will make these islands look closer to me and literally cut things off. Um, and, you know, when you get these good days of visibility, you don't see that. And, you know, when you see the miraging effect going on, that's where you get your refraction. Um, and it's not an upward refraction. It's not pulling anything up over the curve. Like I said, light can refract up or reflect up, but you're not going to get uh, um, objects pull, getting pulled up from behind the curve. The only time I seen that done was when somebody used uh, propane or butane to cause a false um, mirror above an object because of it being so cold. Um, now, there's nowhere out here that um, there's butane above the surface of the water. Now, if you look at what, the way I look at it, I'm looking no higher than the 20 feet um, that's out there to these islands. Uh, the highest this big island is, is about the highest tree out there is about 25 feet high. 30 at the most. But I, I've been out to these islands, and I'd say probably about 25 feet. Um, I'm a good judge as far as height of objects, uh, especially when I'm standing right there because of the line of work that I do. Um, I use 20-foot sections of uh, material all the time that, you know, it's pretty easy for me to judge that distance because I've used it for most of my life. Um, and... You know, this is another thing, too. When these boats are up on plane, you see them perfectly on plane. This is a low-sided boat. 
when it stops, it's no longer on plane. But look at this. You can still see the edges of this boat. And you can see that the waves are kind of lapping up. And at times, uh, you know, you might think that the water would be lapping right in the boat. The other thing is these, uh, these crab traps that you see in the water. You'll see them buoying up, buoying down, inside, out of sight, inside, out of sight. And that's another thing that you don't really see because of our depth perception, the angle that we're on. We don't really see the, the waves and swells as deep as what they are. They're deeper than what they appear. And that also, at long distances, those waves and swells are blocking out parts of the boats or ships. Um, and this is something that, you know, you can even do on a test like I did with my gutter test uh, with my little boat at the end uh, you know I made a splash and made a wave come toward me and it did block out some of that boat or some of my fake boat I should say but look um, I'm all about observations and doing observations and then going back in my files and watching them and looking at them um, also you know looking for small details like when these boats turn and he's facing toward me and then you, you see the back of his boat when it turns a little bit more and it it because of my angle it looks like it's angled back down in toward the water um, and this is another thing too that most all boats when they take off and are on plane their boats sit low in the water in the rear end because that's mainly where all the weight is and that's where their thrust is coming from so it does create a uh, a drag down it pulls the back end of the boat down when it gets uh, going um, and you see that on almost every boat so if people aren't boat savvy they would say why does it look like the back of the boats underwater well that's why um, because these boats just always run uh, rear end heavy um, you know I want people to be the judge for themselves and look at these and you can tell that this is a, a very windy day it's got a lot of chop out there in the water. Um, that bird rack that I was just at is like the halfway marker to Bayport bird rack. So if I was leaving out of Bayport, I would have to go through a, a line of uh, channel markers. And that would be almost, like I say, it's the, approximately the halfway marker to the Bayport uh, bird rack. And from Pine Island, um, I'm looking at a totally different angle to these bird racks, but the bird rack of uh, Bill Watts, Billy Steele, and Cutter's Rock are two miles extra away from me, from my location. So, you know, how can I see some of these racks at this distance? I mean, even just the tippy top at my low perspective. All right, um, I'm not going to talk through this whole thing. Um, I really want you to just watch it, check it out, because right now I'm at about three feet. Um, later in the video, I, I put out a video already, a short video of part of this. Uh, but what I wanted to do was show the whole thing so people can use some comparisons. You can compare, uh, you know, the height that I'm at to... Uh, <laughs> little glitch in the system here um, Wow I hope this uh, my audio comes out okay um, then we just had a little power surge or something all right well anyhow um, you know you can compare this higher observation to the lower observation that I do later on all right, again, appreciate you watching. Um, and check out, um, pay attention to this one boat that I start following. Um, I think that's really an important thing uh, when you pay attention to that and see how far off this boat is. It uh, really makes you wonder how I could even see that far out. All right.
again, thanks for watching. I know I, <laughs> I'm not the best at edi editing, and um, I, I just put my stuff out in the raw. But like I said, I let you be the judge of it. Um, and I'm not trying to make anybody believe anything that they don't want to. Uh, there is Bill Watts rack. Um, and again, you can see the difference in my visibility when we have a good day of visibility. Um, I, I can't say no more than <laughs> there ain't no damn bulge, there ain't no damn curve out here, not as far as I can detect. Even at a lower perspective, I can't detect it. All right, again, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy this observation. Um, and I think uh, my visibility will even get better. And that's what I'm waiting for is one of my to get a really, really killer day uh, where I don't even have the haze and uh, really show off the clarity that this camera can provide. All right, again, thanks for watching. <coughs> sticking up out there farther away would be just their heads probably all right let me shut this thing off and let this rain go by Thank <laughs> you. 
reason why he doesn't move here. shaking doesn't help. so far.
catch a bump coming out of her end of each channel. As I'm tracking this boat, what you'll need to pay attention to is the angular resolution of the object, of the boat. The farther away this boat gets away, the less of this angular resolution I'm going to be able to pick up of it. But, just watch and pay attention. You'll be surprised what I'm actually going to catch. Just watch. It's worth uh, the observation and it's worth paying attention to. Not see. <laughs> I think, can you see him? Yep, sure can. Watching a small boat come out of Hernando Beach. Oh, any particular reason? What's that? I said any particular reason? Science. Oh, science really? Yeah, if you just knew what they said about um, where the curve starts and where it stops at. doesn't help. 
help. Yeah. Yep. I've gone out in rough weather and that's the best time of fishing a lot of times. Notice how the lady laughed when I said for science? That's because most people already figure that uh, science figured it all out for them and that they should trust and believe everything that science has told them. And, you know, this is the thing is they trust complete strangers over their own common senses or their own eyesight when they go out and they observe it themselves. And this is one of the main reasons why I really try to get other people to go out there and do these observations for themselves so they're not just taking my word for it but you know I do show observational proof and you know my videos are not CGI in any way I might adjust the contrast the brightness and the saturation a little bit um, and I'm not even using the auto enhancing on these but <clears throat> the camera itself has adjustments already to for the compensation exposure, the light exposure, so I can do it right while I'm filming. All right. Um, again, um, you know, watch the front end of this boat. Now, always remember the ass end is going to always be lower than the front end. And on a day of miraging, if there was heavy miraging, I wouldn't even see this boat. This boat would be totally vanished by now. It would be gone. It would be out of my sight, and I wouldn't be able to see it. But watch how far I follow it, and you can see the front of this boat is still sticking up. But it is going to get so small that the camera is hardly going to be able to resolve it. All right, keep watching. It's interesting.
search for him, you won't be able to see him.
happened to his friend. Oh, I see him. So damn small. Thank <laughs> you. 
see what the temperature is today. Seventy-five degrees. Evaporation rate ain't very high. <coughs> We're not getting a distortion. Where the magnification? <laughs> Look at these islands, man. They're barely. I, I can't even see this shit with my eyes. I see the top of the big island, but hardly any of the small islands I can see. It's like taking my board and squashing it, compressing it by turning it sideways. Or laying it down flat in front of me from standing straight up to laying it down flat and just looking at the surface. And I'm able to see these islands that far away. Come on, people.
look at how the boat changes too when it changes its angle to you.
seven slats and you can tell it's a high tide because that bottom slat got birds sitting on it. Try one thing before I leave. If I can. I wanted to in, add in depth perception. When you looked at that uh, bird rack, it looked like that sign was, uh, you know, right next to that bird rack. But actually, that's a couple hundred yards away from that bird rack. Um, and if you look at some of my videos from Bayport, um, you know, looking uh, at Bayport bird rack out there, you'd see that when I pan to the north, that sign is quite a ways away from uh, that bird rack. But, you know, due to my perspective of where I was located, um, it looks like it's almost right on the bird rack, but it's not. There is a little pole that you could see sticking up. Now, that is right next to the bird rack. Um, and you could see all seven slots, uh, slats or wood that goes across the uh, the bird rack there, and you can see birds setting on all seven of them. I should have said something before getting to this point, but uh, next part of the video, I'm going to go low. And how low do you want me to go? Well, we're going to go low enough to where I think you should see a big difference. Okay, people say they want low perspective. There's the water. Set my camera down on this towel. Hopefully I can see over the edge of the seawall here. And let's see what we can see. It's raining out here too, so Justin. 
the big island. Maybe that was it. There's the big island. totally different angle of that little spot in between. I'm getting splashed with salt water, so I gotta, I gotta back out of this thing to get out of here. But I want to just show you this. Hey, it's not a fucking ball. I hope it saved it because I shot my camera off without hitting the off button. Try it again, just in case it didn't save it. show you again where I got my camera set on that towel. Yeah, I'm standing in water behind me and you know, I'm getting splashed by this water over here. I didn't want to close up. There's all these birds right there too. But look at this. It's crazy people. That is crazy shit. I got good visibility today with a little bit of haze. Water bouncing over the seawall, splashing me. Um, water.
water's not. <laughs> Don't poop on me, birds. I don't feel like getting shit on, let alone getting rained on. This uh, lens here. I got water all over it. I gotta take my camera and clean it now. Wipe it down, wipe off the, the salt water. Five and a half, six miles away, people. It's crazy. Or even how about this right here? I'll go again. One more shot here.
low perspective. Got it right here. Yeah, I'm always saying I'm done, and then I wind up staying another half an hour because I'm not done. I paid five dollars to get in this place. I wasn't going to waste it when I had such great uh, visibility. by this shit right here splashing me. Uh. Alright, good luck with that one. Well, I thought I was done, but then I decided to try something different. And here shortly, you'll, uh, you'll see what I did. Um, I changed locations. I went over where I had my tripod set. Originally up on uh, up on the tripod, and I set it down real low. Um, I set the a two by four down and with my towel over it, and decided to shoot some more. Okay, um, and this is what you'll see. Then uh, later on, I'll show you uh, after my I think it was either my SD card ran out. I went back and got an SD card, and then shortly. After that, my battery was dead, and I didn't bring my other battery, so I called it a day. But, again, another long observation, but from a low perspective, I think uh, most people should appreciate this and understand that I should not be able to see this, even with your added-in refraction bullcrap. Um, like I say, I think light refracts up and blocks out objects. Um, it's pretty obvious when you have a good day of visibility that there's nothing out there blocking nothing. Uh, if anything, it's waves and swells that will block out parts of the boat. And due to angular 
resolution or my angular size of the boat it's not going to look like a whole lot sticking up but it's enough to keep the boat afloat because water is not going in the boat it's obvious you can still see the sides of this boat they're just very small because the boat's sitting low in the water pretty plain and simple if you ask me I have a lot of things I could add I could say but I think the observation says it alone without me adding words to it visibility um, is a must in making good observations from a low perspective if your visibility is bad uh, you're not going to see very much especially if there's mirroring and miraging going on uh, everything out here would be cut off to where you couldn't see it and that's where people mistaken saying that that's the curve or when I do have good visibility they're saying oh refraction is pulling everything up from behind the curve and laying it flat out in front of you come on people what makes more sense what makes more sense that's just common sense and visual proofs um, should say a whole lot all right I'll get let go back to the audio on this I'm not going to talk all the way through it like I said I I want people to judge for themselves on what my observations are showing <laughs>
sitting here in the dirt so we're gonna try this again my memory card ran out so I'm gonna have to try to rebalance this thing and everything center it line it up whatever refocus it Zoom. Shove some sand underneath here. <laughs> Look to my camera up a little bit. Got my hands all sandy. Yeah, we're gonna push it down a little.
water splashing up over the seawall blocking me out. see those markers. Look at even two feet uh, target hidden height should be uh, like 12 feet to these islands. And I'm seeing these islands uh, without missing 12 foot of it. Um, also at the beginning of the video, um, I'm going to say that my tripod uh, was up four feet, even though I think it was less than that, because I think it only sits up 26 inches. But, you know, I'll allow for... Uh, uh, I'll give it four feet for the seawall and everything going down, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, that boat that was going out in the distance um, that I showed way out there um, was over six miles. But at six miles, it should have had eight foot missing from it. It sure didn't look like there was eight foot missing from it. I think the boat uh, went out over eight miles. But let's say it went eight miles out and, uh, you know, because I know it went a couple more miles past uh, this bird rack right here. So if it went eight miles out, uh, there should have been 20 foot missing. Uh, that whole boat should have been gone because I don't think the boat sets up 20 feet high. Um, so, you know, again, you know, observations are great to learn from and, even showing where there's miraging and everything, uh, the mirroring, um, it's great to show because I think we can learn from that and, and learn a great deal of detail. So that's why I don't cut all that stuff out. I leave it all um, and let you decide what you're seeing. All right, again, thanks for watching. Uh, be your own judge. Don't let other people tell you what to think or what you're seeing.